Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the second part of uh, the uh, tutorials of uh, curved beams. Uh, uh, in this, I will be deriving the Winkler back uh, back equation. Uh, the Winkler back equation goes by the bending stresses. That is, it defines the bending stress uh, which is induced in a curved beam uh, when it is subjected to bending moment. Um, so it goes by this. I had mentioned this in my previous video. And in this video, we'll derive this equation. Uh, in for straight beams, you will use the normal bending equation that is m by i into c. Uh, for uh, curved beams, this is the equation. And if you use the normal equation for curved beams, you will find uh, that the stresses induced uh, will be higher than the values that you get by by uh, uh, finding the values through that equation that is uh, m by i into c if you use that equation for curved beams you will find that the stresses which are induced are actually more than the values that you obtain from that uh, by using that equation anyways uh, coming to this uh, diagram here so this is a curved beam uh, as I said before, uh, the geometric axis and the new, uh, neutral axis do not coincide in curved beams. And uh, the neutral axis is below the geometrical axis. Uh, we'll consider an element uh, which is at a distance y from the neutral axis. So the element is at a distance y from the neutral axis. So this is the element. Uh, and uh, it has an area of uh, delta A. And uh, uh, the element makes uh, an angle phi. Uh, total total angle is phi. This this is the angle phi. That is the length of the element is going to be uh, R n plus y into phi. So that is the uh, uh, length of the element, and uh, we subject it to a bending moment. Uh, so when you subject this to sorry, the bending moment should be in this direction, the opposite direction. So when you subject this to a bending moment in this direction, what happens is this element gets stretched a little bit. So it gets stretched uh, by some distance and uh, by an angle delta phi okay so keep those two in mind now uh, we need an equation for stress right so and uh, we'll this is the this is what i was talking about see this s is equal to r theta we have learned this equation in our high school uh, where the distance is going to be the radius into the angle subtended by the arc uh, so this arc subtends an angle delta phi and this uh, element subtends, subtends an angle phi okay and Rn is the radius of the neutral axis and remember y is measured from uh, the neutral axis okay and E is the radial distance between geometrical axis and the neutral axis I have explained this in my previous video so E is the radial distance between geometrical axis and neutral axis we, we termed it as eccentricity uh, I have a side view or the cross-sectional view here uh, the same thing so this is the element the black uh, shaded part of the element it is at the distance y from the neutral axis and the radial distance is e, eccentricity. Okay, coming to the video, oh, sorry, coming to the derivation, uh, we need an expression for bending stress. So, first we go with strain. Uh, what is the basic definition of strain? It is that uh, it is equal to the change in uh, length or deformation divided by original shape or change in length by original length. So here the change in length, uh, so if we use this fundamental equation, the change in length is going to be, what is, uh, we know that the change in length is going to be S or it, let us consider it as S. So what is S? R into theta. Here R is going to be Y. So Y into delta phi is going to be the change in length. And original length is going to be, this is the original length. So that original length is going to be, what is the radius now? Rn plus Y into the angle subtended by the arc that is phi so that is the original length so that is strain uh, we need an expression for stress so you multiply both sides by Young's modulus of uh, uh, modulus of elasticity so if you multiply by modulus of elasticity here uh, this is become stressed by strain elasticity is equal to so the strain strain gets, gets cancelled and you are left with bending stress uh, elastic, uh, elasticity remains as it is in this side so this is the first equation uh, first important equation that uh, we come up with now what we have to do is we need to uh, get an expression for elasticity in terms of bending moment that is being applied uh, so we'll go through all this um, okay now coming to the second part uh, for this beam to be in equilibrium 
uh, it has to satisfy two conditions that is the sum of all the forces must be equal to zero and uh, the sum of all the moments must be equal to zero so considering the first case that is first condition that is sum of all the forces must be equal to zero and we know that force is equal to the bending stress into area so that is going to be stress into area but since we are considering this on a small element we need to integrate it so sigma into delta a integration integral of sigma into delta a because we are considering it on a small element uh, from one so from one we know the value of sigma is this one so you substitute the value of sigma here that is uh, e by delta phi into phi into rn plus phi into y uh, into delta i. delta i remains as it is now remember that this integral symbol is only for the area and the distance and it is not for this angles here so you are not supposed to put the integral symbol for this uh, because the all these three values are constants um, all these are simple numerical values so you need not associate the integral symbol with this so these three are co constants they are out outside uh, so yeah so we know that sigma f is going to be this into uh, integral of this but we know that sigma f is equal to zero so you equate this to zero when you equate this to zero this goes to the other side and gets becomes zero so integral of we are left with y into delta i divided by rn plus y is equal to zero so that is the second important equation that we come up with uh, that we call it as that uh, we call that as two now coming to the second condition here uh, as the second condition is that the sum of all moments must be equal to zero this is, this is the condition which we need to satisfy um, and we know what is moment moment is equal to force into perpendicular distance so f into perpendicular distance uh, that is sigma we since we are considering this on element that sigma sigma f into the perpendicular distance is going to be y so sigma radial distance that is so this is going to be y sigma f into y but uh, we have already derived an equation for sigma f that is this one right e into delta phi by phi into integral of y into dA into uh, divided by rn plus y so that again you might you write that equation and multiply it with y that is perpendicular distance so y becomes y square here uh, so uh, this is the equation for moment that we have got here now uh, we have there is a predefined step here the just to get the equation this step has been introduced what you do is you can write y square by rn plus y this this expression here that is y square by rn plus y as y minus rn y divided by rn plus y so you can just look go through it again that is y square by rn plus y is equal to y minus of whole rn into y divided by rn plus y so if you take the lcm you will again get this expression only so just for the sake of this equation or the derivation uh, this step has been introduced or this uh, expression is replaced here so you replace this expression with this one here y minus r n y divided by r n plus y uh, so now you can separate the integrals so integral of y into delta a minus integral of r n y divided by r n plus y into delta uh, into delta a but we have already arrived that y into delta a divided by r n plus y so this y into delta a divided by r n plus y is equal to zero so you just uh, make that zero uh, now we are left with moment is equal to e into delta phi divided by phi into integral of y into delta i okay so now there is a very important uh, concept that you guys need to understand that is uh, this distance this uh, we we said that uh, for this beam to be in equilibrium the sum of moments must be equal to zero but this is not going to be equal to zero why because if we had measured this distance y from the centroidal axis or the geometrical axis only then this would have been equal to zero but now we have measured this y from the neutral axis and the neutral axis is offset from the geometrical axis by a distance a radial distance e so this y contains that uh, distance of the geometrical axis uh, the distance of the element from the geometrical axis plus the eccentricity value also so when you integrate this value you'll get 0 plus e so that is e so you'll get e into and when you integrate delta i it becomes the whole area that is a so this this is a very important step that you need to understand that why the this integral becomes uh, eccentricity into a 
uh, after that it is it's pretty simple uh, you, we got uh, and uh, in the beginning of the equation i had said that we need to substitute e with respect to m so we got it now so we have this expression here so you just cross multiply and you get the expression in terms of modulus of elasticity uh, for uh, the bending moment substitute this in uh, this equation here so when you substitute that uh, phi by delta phi all of the, the angles will get cancelled and you're left with the equation uh, that is this equation so it's 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 a, it's a pretty simple equation although the diagrams look a bit complicated if you understand the equation or uh, if you understand the diagram and this part in particular uh, it's, it's 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 all easy uh, and then uh, this is the general expression now if you want uh, to find the stresses at the innermost fiber and the outermost fiber uh, you just introduce uh, the distance of the neutral axis from the outermost fiber is uh, co uh, and the distance of the neutral axis from the innermost fiber is, is ci um, so we are considering this with respect to the neutral axis that's why um, for for si sigma i that is the stress induced in the innermost fiber you replace y by ci when you replace uh, y by ci uh, here ci remains as it is but here it becomes rn minus ci why rn minus ci because uh, this undergoes uh, here you can see rn minus ci you'll get the radius of the inner uh, the radius of curvature of the inner fiber innermost fiber so that is ri and again m into co divided by uh, for stress induced at the outermost fiber you replace uh, uh, ci uh, sorry you replace y by co so that is the distance of the neutral axis from the outermost fiber so when you replace that m into co divided by a into e into rn plus co rn plus co is nothing but the radius of the outer fiber ro so that's it guys uh, and uh, why is there a negative symbol here because the stresses are opposite in uh, sense one is uh, uh, tensile stress that is going to be induced and the other one is a uh, compressive stress that's it guys uh, so this is the Winkler back equation uh, it is a it is generally a six to seven mark question uh, so nothing there's nothing important or nothing uh, too much to mug up here just remember that this becomes eccentric value the integral value becomes eccentric value and just remember the simple stress that is uh, strain stress uh, the two conditions and uh, you can and just replacing that is uh, you have to come for you have to arrive at an expression for e with respect to m and you can arrive at the equation very easily so if you have any doubts do let me know in the comment section below and i'll try and answer them thank you